Hi and welcome to Reseller News Weekends. My name is Rich Bassini. Today is September 23rd. And I just want to start off by saying thank you to all the new subscribers who subscribed to me recently. It is greatly appreciated. For those new to this channel, I just want to say um, I really do appreciate you taking the time and initiative to hear me out with the uh, Reseller News. And I do hope you get something out of it. And I do hope you'll keep coming back for more. I got quite a few windows open up there on the browser, so we're going to get right to it. And I'm going to bump out of this screen here and take it over here. I need my glasses for this, folks. Okay, <clears throat> this one here, for those who are new, I do not read everything verbatim. Um, I will give you the website as to where I got the information, and the rest is up to you if you would like to pick up where I left off. This one comes from retail.emarketer.com. And it says, what a trade war could mean for U.S. retailers. Now, we all know e-commerce, whether you're selling online or in a brick-and-mortar store, we are involved with retailing. And this, to some point, would have an effect, especially for those who are importing goods from China. <laughs> uh, that could be a problem. So it goes on to say here, so far, China and the U.S. have uh, matched each other tit for tat in the growing trade war. Both countries have imposed tariffs on $50 billion worth of goods, with the U.S. threatening an additional $200 billion and China another $60 billion on 5,207 products. It says over here, the U.S. imports more from China than we expect, though, according to the U.S. Census Bureau and the U.S. Bureau of Economic and Analysts, 18% of U.S. imports come from China, while 8% of U.S. exports go to China. So there is a big difference in there, right, if you really think about it. Um, I'm not going to expand too much on this here, on this topic here. Um, for those of us, well, I don't, but for those uh, resellers who do uh, buy from China, I don't know, be it Alibaba or AliExpress, whatever those, those companies are out there, um, this may have an impact on your business. So uh, you might want, you know, you might want to think about that. That you might want to re-strategize your, uh, you know, your sourcing when it comes to China. This was posted on September 14th, 2018. So you might want to look into that there. Let's move right along. Got to bump out of here. The next story deals with eBay, and it comes from the Mirror. Dot cu, I mean dot, dot co dot uk. This was posted uh, yesterday, September twenty second, twenty eighteen, and it says over here, cancer cancer patients using eBay tricked into buying bogus treatments alongside of Sainsbury and Argos shopping. Zapper and, clean, and cleansing pills are for sale on eBay and available to pick up along with your weekly shop. You know, when I read this story, it talks about this person over here report, uh, Rosalind Fenton picking up the Zapper from the Zanesbury after uh, ordering on eBay. Now, it says over here, desperate cancer patients are being duped into buying bogus treatments which they can collect from Sansbury and Argos. Online auction site eBay is accused of endangering lives by allowing sellers to peddle uh, unregulated products aimed at vulnerable patients. You know, it's no wonder why I think eBay has a lot of little glitches and problems going on. They got so many things going on within, within their company. <laughs> it just makes you wonder. Um, it says over here, and it's uh, High Street Partners for face allegations of allowing trade <clears throat> to flourish by passing unchecked packages onto con uh, cons con customers as part of a lucrative click and collect deal. Sansbury and Argos are facing claims that are leading legitimacy to dangerous products by entering the supply chain without checking the contents of the parcel they handle. Um, I'm not going to read the whole story, folks, but if you would like to check it out, you could read it. Um, 
I'm surprised eBay is letting this go. I was looking at a little part of it here, and uh, it was saying something about eBay. I can't really seem to find it right now. I don't want to take too much of your time because I got I got quite a few windows opened up. But um, <clears throat> you can check it out if you like. Just go to uh, www.mirror.co.uk. Let's bump on out of here. Here's another story that pertains to eBay. eBay pulls a 90k listing for Richmond v Collingwood talk, uh, tickets. All right. Thousands of fans online get tickets, right? Oh, I've got cut off over here. Hold on tight. If you're using this check, please do not refresh this page. Okay, that's the message that's coming up. Um, I'm not into sports. I don't really follow it much, but I figured it deals with eBay. Let's put it on, you know. Let's put it out here. Um, it goes on to say, a fierce online bidding war for preliminary AFL tickets, which reach 90,000, have been pulled down from eBay. The level one M35 tickets for the Tigers versus Magpies match at Melbourne Cricket Ground on Friday was being bid on by 32 hopefuls on the online auction site tonight. Another pair of preliminary uh, tickets were also listed at $20,000, more than 200 times on the original maximum uh, selling price advertised on Ticket Tech. You know, I don't know. I mean, I heard about this once before. I think I did a segment on this here. Um, first of all, me personally, I wouldn't spend any kind of money on any tickets. Because those who know me, I am, I am considered a frugal entrepreneur. <laughs> and... Uh, I would never spend ninety thousand dollars. I'm just saying that's that's the reach. But I'm just saying, you know, uh, in general, you know, um, well, here's one of here. Like I said, it says another pair of uh, prelim tickets were also listed. A pair for twenty thousand dollars. So um, I, I can think of better things to do than spend money like that on uh, you know watching games. You know, but anyway, uh, if you'd like to check this out, this is on News Nine. It's www. Nine News. One word, dot com, dot au. Let's move right along, folks. Here, one, here's one from the Herald Sun. Now, what is this story that I picked this up for some reason? Uh, bear with me for one. Oh, it must have been with something with the tickets again. Um, yeah, uh, you know, actually, this is a subscription. Oh, sorry about that, folks. <laughs> I didn't realize I clicked that on. Sorry, I might apologize. Okay, uh, it says eBay accidentally posted photos of high-dose ecstasy pills on clothing listing. Interesting. And this one came out from the <clears throat> Mirror. Whoopsie. Let me back out of here, folks. Sorry about that. This one is from the Mirror.co.uk. And it goes on to say, the seller from Wolf Wolfhampton had listed the dark blue retro Adidas jacket for an auction, but included a picture of something else entirely. So let's see what we go down here. You know, I'm, uh, let's see here. Now it's asking questions here. Um, skip the survey. Sorry about that, folks. Anyway, here's what the uh, thing showed. Here's the ad. Um, <laughs> retro Adidas jacket. Well, there you go. Um, looks like they got pills over there, right? That's the ecstasy what they were talking about. Let me see here. Yeah, okay. That's it right there. Uh, the person was supposed to be selling a jacket, uh, right? Excellently posted, yeah, whatever. Clothing, whatever. And uh, instead was uh, ecstasy pills that showed up. Oh, boy, you never know what you're going to see on this thing. Uh, okay, yeah, an eBay seller posted um, a photo of what appeared to be a bag full of ecstasy pills on a clothing listing by mistake. Oh, boy. That ain't going to be good. Anyway, if you would like to uh, look into this story, yowza, um, you could check it out. I'm not going to get into it. It's uh, Again, it's www.mirror.co.uk. With eBay, folks, you never know what's going to be selling on here, right? That's the way it goes. This one here is from the Daily Record. Let's see what this story was all about again. 
Um, I'm sorry, folks. I'm trying to bear with this. Thing. You know, sometimes I click on these these sites here, and I end up getting another one. Um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna follow through with this one. I don't think. Let me see first. Let's see what we got here. Oh, okay. Well, we got eBay. Okay, here we go. Crooked cleaner Nick Jimmy Choose and, and flogged stolen gear on eBay. Then it goes on to tell you the person uh, rifled through the barrack, uh, backs of wardrobes and attics and to find 10,000 worth of treasures belonging to families who trusted her with their keys to their home. This is why you got to be careful, folks. Uh, unless it's a relative or a really good close friend, I wouldn't be doing stuff like that. But um, let's see what the story says. A thief, a thieving cleaner, was caught with some some of uh, she gear. She stole, spotted on a sale for, for sale on eBay. It goes over here. Greedy Jill Hillman pinched ten thousand dollars worth of jewelry, uh, toys, and clothing, including Jimmy Choo's shoes and Mont Blanc pen whose clients who trusted her with the keys to their home. Um, no good. But anyway, uh, if you want to read the rest of this story, you can check it out. Um, you know the site, I believe. Oh, this one here is the... Um, this is the Daily Record, one word, www.dailyrecord, one word, .co.uk. And you can check this story out. We're going to move right along. I can get out of here. Okay. All right. This one. Hope this ain't the same one. I don't think so. Or is it? Let me see. No, I don't think it is. Uh, let's see. Let's see. I'm sorry, folks. Just trying to make sure because sometimes I click on these things here. I get so many different, uh, you know, Google alerts and stuff like that. I'm not sure which one I'm putting posting up here for the time. Bear with me for one time. One second here. All right, let's read this story here. It says, Woman pleads guilty to reselling Gainesville Housing Authority supplies on eBay. This came out September 18, 2018. A woman who worked an accounting specialist in the Gainesville Housing Authority pleaded guilty last week to selling $28,000 of stolen office supplies on her personal eBay account, according to court documents. It says over here, Jennifer Sipe pleaded guilty to one count of federal program theft. She was sentenced Thursday September 13th, 12 months on probation. Um, this is another one. I'm not going to read this whole story. If you would like to check it out, folks, you know I'm going to give you the site right now. It's www.gainesvilletimes, one word, dot com. And you can check it out. Let's move right along, folks. Fabric is selling its Room 3. <clears throat> sound system on eBay okay and I'm not familiar with this uh, company here but uh, for those who are I guess uh, this may have some meaning or may not fabric sound system is a world is a world famous part of it, of it and now could be bought in online auction the Martin audio rig for room 3 of the Farrington Club uh, Farringdon uh, Club including subwoofers main drivers and boot monitors from Arch 1 and Arch 2 are now on eBay on live auction. And it goes on to say eBay's, I mean, uh, each ARC system has its own listing, both of them which will end on Wednesday, the 26th of September. So if anybody is interested in these here, you know where to go, folks. This one here, let me give you this website. It's uh, HTTPS. Snake guys forward slash forward slash djmag.com. And the story you're looking for is Fabric is selling its Room 3 sound system on eBay. Let's move right along. Here we have, now this was posted September 17, 2018. <clears throat> I think I might have mentioned this in my other uh, reseller news. eBay is to implement penalty free. Policy October 1st. eBay confirmed today that it will begin charging U.S. sellers penalty fees for what it considers excessive claims or underperformance beginning October 1st. However, eBay UK sellers caught a break earlier the day. A eBay, uh, an eBay UK announced that it's proposed an implementation for sellers in that country 
until next year. Um, it goes to say over here, it goes on to say eBay will charge an extra 4% final value fee when sellers fall below standard. I talked about this, I believe, in the uh, reseller news yesterday. And um, I'm not too happy about it. Uh, at the rate I'm going right now, folks, to be honest with you, with my sales, I've been letting my listings drop off. But then again, I'm trying to relist the items again with the store, hoping to keep the cost down because supposedly with the uh, starter store, you get 100 free listings a month. So that's why I'm letting them drop off. Those were old listings, and I'm going to probably relist in some new stuff again, and hopefully uh, we'll see if we can get some sales here because we're going on week four now. So far for the whole month of September, not one inquiry and not one sale. Not good. But anyway, um, it goes on to say here, the initial, the initial fee of 4% uh, for high rate, for high, very high rates of the item not as described and for below standard performance are not subject to maximum final value V caps and will be applied to the total amount of the sale, including shipping. Final value fees discounts include top rated seller discounts, which <clears throat> will not apply to additional 4% value fee. <clears throat> and then it goes on to say over here, Here's an example it provided on its policy page. Seller B sold a men's rich watch for $9,640, including shipping. The seller has an above standard seller performance level and a very high valuation for item as not as described. Returns, uh, returns on eBay.com in jewelry and watches category. So an additional 4% final value fee applies. Uh, then it goes over here to say final value fee calculation is 10% of $9,640 equals $964. Fee cap at $750. 4% of $9,640 equals $385.60. Total value fee is $750 plus $385 equals $1,135.60. And uh, I think I mentioned my other... Uh, reseller news. I'm not happy about this here. So far, I am an above st a seller, standard seller, but we will see that yet to be seen because I'm letting a lot of things drop off, and I think it's not going to be too long before uh, eBay will drop my top rate seller status. But if that happens, um, they will be getting a call from me because I would want to know why, as I said in my other video. Uh, if I can't make sales off your website, how am I supposed to be? <laughs> How can you know? How am I going to be able to maintain a top-rate seller if I'm not making any sales? You know, so uh, they really need to rethink that out. But uh, we'll see how it goes. If you are interested in reading this story, folks, this is in uh, ecommercebytes.com. Okay, so it's www.ecommercebytes.com. Let's move right along. <clears throat> Look at this here, folks. This came out on the. Uh, Sky uh, st. TV, okay, and uh, that's the website. You could probably see it on here as well. It goes on to say the title anyway. Scientist as concern or uh, concern as space rock from Skype put on eBay. Okay, um, okay. Anyway, it's a nice picture by the way. I like that. Um, it's supposed to be a geologist has raised concerns that the ancient rock from a meteorite site. Uh, on the late on what well, on the aisle of the Skype has been spotted for sale on eBay. Did I say Skype over here? Let's say Skype. I said Skype. It's supposed to be Sky. I said Skype. Oh, I'm sorry. It's one of those days today, folks. Um, <clears throat> that's why I had to check it out again. I said, did I say that? I did. Okay. It's feared mineral hunters have been active on the straight, straight hard, um, straight hard pencil net peninsula, where a team of recently discovered meteorite deposits from an impact of 60 million years ago. They contain mineral material from space that has not been found on Earth before. Um, let's see what else they say here. I'm not going to read the whole thing, folks. Um, well, the president looked at this much to read anyway. It says, Dr. Simon Drake of Burbeck, uh, University of London, made finds of the sky uh, with the colleague, Dr. Andy Beard. Uh, he said about three weeks ago, one of the students working on a project from the uh, from this alerted us to the fact that our samples were being sold on eBay. This is a very very uh, this is a very small fragile site, and has been working with the Scottish National Heritage, SNH, 
trying to get some protection for the sites. <clears throat> the guy was selling a meteorite slice for, uh, of rock for $9.99 per sample and had at least 10 of them. Uh, we're, looking to, uh, we're looking at two football sides having uh, been taken out to provide these. He added, "This is going on. This is going for a price of a fish, of a fish supper, and it's 60 million years old. It's insanely, uh, it's insanity, really." <clears throat> if you want to read the rest of this story, folks, you can check it out. Um, the site over here is uh, HTTPS. I call it the little snake eyes forward slash forward slash stv dot tv, and you can check this story out. Let's move right along. All right, this one over here, it says Red Awning brings thousands of vacation rentals into eBay, onto eBay with a new store. Emmerville, California, September 9th, uh, 19, 2018, uh, PR Newswire. It says RedWing.com, <coughs> uh, Red Awning, uh, Red Wing, Red Awning, uh, dot, uh, dot com. The world's largest branded network of vacation party, uh, property rentals has given eBay customers access to more than 25,000 unique vacation rentals with the launch of a new red awning store on eBay. Millions of eBay shoppers are now able to instantly purchase vacations <clears throat> at a wide range of homes, apartments, and condos across the U.S. by selecting the logic section uh, under the travel category on eBay. Okay. Um, this is new to me as far as this part goes. I'm not familiar with the company Red Awning. But, if again, if people are into uh, traveling and you're interested in looking into vacation rentals, uh, you might want to check this out. Uh, let me give you the website in case you want to continue reading on with it. Uh, it's HTPS, Snake Guys, Vultures, Vultures, Slash, Markets.BusinessInsider.com. You can check the rest of this story out. Let's move right along here. Amazon wants to be more like eBay with the Amazon storefronts launch. <clears throat> now, I don't know. I think I talked about this before in my, my other segments. Um, eBay is taking a leaf out of the... Um, no, Amazon, I should say. <laughs> eBay. Amazon is taking a leaf out of uh, eBay's playbook uh, by promoting themselves as a big collection of small businesses with Amazon storefronts launch. Rather than being a big, bad, encompassing retailer who threatened jobs in traditional bricks and mortar retail outlets, they want to uh, they want to pivot 180 degrees and highlight the millions of retailers who partner with Amazon with their first ever TV uh, na national TV commercial running as a U.S. <clears throat> feature real business that sell on Amazon. Uh, you could check this out, folks, if you want to read it. I got this one off of, uh, it's uh, tangbay.com. You could check them out and just look for this story here. Amazon wants to be more like eBay uh, with the Amazon storefronts launch. You could check them out as well. Last but not least, one of my favorite sites. You guessed it, downdetector.com. And this was 15 hours ago it was posted. It says over here, eBay is like Amazon just without customers or working search engine. Can't wait for the next earnings report. It's going to be bad. I'm reading the comments, not me. Let's move this down here and see what else we got here. Um, I can hear uh, wind. Oh, jeez. Uh, I'm going to read it as it is here. They really refer to Devin Winnick, but uh, it says over here, I can hear Winbag now, just need a little more time on promoted listings. Extortion scheme <laughs> is really coming along as well as the other bend. <laughs> ben to sell off the site improvements. Oh, jeez. Um, <laughs> it said that should be uh, that should be the new slogan. Uh, <laughs> listen, um, <laughs> uh, I get a kick out of reading these things here because you know uh, people try to bring out good points, and you know in some cases, uh, I found that going to this site, I am more enlightened sometimes by reading the comments from other sellers and buyers that post on because. These are things that I'm not even aware of half of the time. That's why I love to check down Detector out on a daily basis because you don't know what's, what these people are experiencing out there. And uh, unless you check it, you know, and, and then you, you, know, you, may have, you may be experiencing the same things, but you don't know about it because you never got around to checking it or nobody brought it to your attention. Let's put it that way. But um, 
I'm going to read one more comment, and then we're going to bump out of the screen and call this uh, news weekend, the reseller weekend, weekends here, uh, to a close. It says, over here, here's the kind of garbage buyers we have on eBay. It's just getting worse. Buyers give me the best offer, $25 on, an 80, on a $69 item. Well, it's been around for a while, so I sold it at cost, a uh, slight loss here. It says, I forgot the buyer pays the late. Uh, yeah, the buyer pays late after unpaid item case opened. Uh, she writes me today asking I have a heavier style. <laughs> if I have a heavier style, uh, she says it's lighter than, ex than she expected, but will pay more for the heavier one. In the listing, everything is measurements, weight, every detail, and four photos. Uh, it, says, it says over here, if, sa if she says it will be returned, I will just say move on and block. Uh, this is all the time on eBay. So many. Buyers don't read. Buyers don't ask. Buyers want great for cheap. And that's true. And it says China has ruined buyers and they expect everything cheap. All right. Uh, you can read the rest of the story here. Just go to this site here. Here's the URL right here, downdetector.com. And I'm going to bump out of this screen here. Well, that concludes the Reseller News Weekends. I hope you got some information on there. It was helpful to you. And if you do like my videos, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you did get anything out of it and you do like the video, give it a thumbs up. And most of all, please don't forget to hit that subscribe bell. This is Rich Bassini signing off for the Reseller News. Today is September 23rd, 2018. I'm wishing you all the best. Have a great weekend. Until next time, take care now. Bye-bye.